The Sun is Also a Star, pages 37 through 39. Natasha. I'm only two steps out of the building before I dial the number. I'd like to make an appointment for today as soon as possible, please. The woman who answers sounds like she is in a construction zone. In the background, I hear the sound of a drill, a loud banging. I have to repeat my name twice. And what's the issue? She asks. I hesitate. The thing about being an undocumented immigrant is you get really good at keeping secrets. Before the whole deportation adventure began, the only person I told was Beth, even though she's not usually that great with secrets. They just slip out, she says, as if she has absolutely no control of the things coming out of her mouth. Still, even Bev knew how important it was to keep this one. Hello, ma'am. Can you tell me your issue? The woman on the phone prompts again. I press the phone closer to my ear and stand in the middle of the steps. Around me, the world speeds up like a movie on a fast forward. People walk up and down the stairs at three times speed with jerky movements. Clouds zoom by overhead. The sun changes position in the sky. I'm undocumented, I say. My heart races like I've been running a very long way for a very long time. I need to know more than that, she says. So I tell her, I'm Jamaican. My parents entered the country illegally when I was eight. We've been here ever since. My dad got a DUI. We're being deported. Lester Barnes thought Anthony Fitzgerald could help. She sets an appointment for 11 a.m. Anything else I can help you with? She says. She asks. No, I say. That will be enough. The lawyer's office is uptown from where I am, close to Times Square. I check my phone, 8.35 a.m. A small breeze kicks up, lifting the hem of my skirt and playing through my hair. The weather is surprisingly mild for mid-November. Maybe I didn't need my leather jacket after all. I make a quick wish for a not-too-freezing winter before remembering that I probably won't be around to see it. If snow falls in a city and no one is around to feel it, is it still cold? Yes. The answer to that question is yes. I pull my jacket closer. It's still hard for me to believe that my future is going to be different from this one, the one I planned. Two and a half hours to go. My school's only a 15 minute walk from here. I briefly consider heading over so I can have one last look at the building. It's a very competitive science magnet high school, and I worked very hard to get into it. I can't believe that after today, I may never see it again. In the end, I decide against going. Too many people to run into and too many questions like, why aren't you in school today? That I don't want to answer. Instead, I decide to kill time by watching the three miles, walking the three miles to the lawyer's office. My favorite vinyl record store is on the way. I put my headphones on and cue up the Temple of a Dog album. It's a 1990s grunge rock kind of day. All angst and loud guitar. Chris Cornwell's voice rises and I let it carry some of my cares away.